DC governors and leaders consider consensus to determine who becomes the next party chairman. They say consensus is strongly an option on the table. And the National Assembly is frowned at a judgment on the Electoral Act from the Federal High Court in Uma here. They say they are appealing the matter. The Attorney General of the Federation has also spoken. He it says it's work in progress. Tonight, we dissect the implication of the judgment and the move by the National Assembly. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the program. This is Politics Today, live on Channels Television. I'm Sean Joaquin Baloye in Abuja. We begin by telling you about the meeting of the governors of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. The PDP governors met today in Aba, in Abia State. The governors reviewed the situation of things in the country, the running of affairs under the APC-led federal government. The party says it is ready to take over and offer qualitative leadership options to rescue the nation. From our Vice uh, President Atiku Abubakar, uh, also announced formally his intention to run for the presidency in 2023. In the end, this campaign is not about me. It is about you. It is about the future of this country. Let our stories be told for generations to come that we are the ones that rescued Nigeria when it was on the verge of fatal destruction. This is our last opportunity to write our names to the golden name of history. It must be now or never. This time around is different. Our journey will not end at the ball. We will get to work and rescue Nigeria. I invite every Nigerian to join me in this mission to save our dear country. I believe together we can do it. This is what we owe to Nigeria and the future generations. I have never been this optimistic and with your support and God's grace we will get the, to the promised land. Well, that was a formal declaration by the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar of his intention to be Nigeria's next president. He made a declaration, Abuja, where he says unity and security as well as education will be a priority for his administration. This is a second consecutive time that the former Vice President will be throwing his hat in the ring, but not the second time. It's about the third or the fourth time that he wants to be Nigeria's president. Well, then there are more stories in the political saying, and here are some of your political roundup stars. The People's Democratic Party caucus of the Adamawa State House of Assembly has endorsed the state governor, Omar Fintiri, for a second tenure as governor of the state. The Speaker of the House, Aminu Iya Abbas, told newsmen at a media briefing in his office in Yola, the Adamawa State Capital, that they supported Fintiri based on his track record of performance. The endorsement came with a donation of 21 million naira to purchase the expression of interest and nomination forms for the state governor. We, the PDP members, hereby endorse His Excellency Right Honorable Ahmad Mori Fintiri uh, for second term of office come 2023. In Yobe State, Governor Maima Labuni has asked the newly elected members of the All Progressives Congress to carry everyone along so as to win the 2023 general elections. Governor Buni, who was represented by his deputy, Idi Baride Kubana, gave the charge during the inauguration of the party state executive in Damaturu, the Yobe State capital. I would like to ask the new officials of our great party to carry everyone along for the progress of the party. They should ensure unity mutual respect, fairness for all members in the primary elections to be conducted in due course. 
A group, the Concerned Arawa Civil Society Organization in Nigeria, has joined its voice to those calling for the zoning of the presidency to the Southeast 2023 election. The group, which is a coalition of four to five civil society organizations in the North, said that their call became necessary in the interest of justice and equity. It accused any northerner joining the presidential seat to contest as agents of disunity. Spokesperson of the group, while addressing a press conference in Kaduna, said aside from the Southeast, the only alternative is the South-South. We urge all political parties to run their presidential candidate to South. Any party that refuses to do so, we are going to mobilize our teaming youth and campaign against such political party. As the race to the 2023 presidential election heightens, Governor Amino Tambual of Sokoto State and the presidential candidate on the platform of the People's Democratic Party has met with the former military president, General Ibrahim Babengida, and former head of state, General Abdulslam Abubakar, in their hilltop residences in Mina. Addressing the media after the meeting, Governor Tambual said he met the former leaders to seek their blessings and consult them on his aspiration to become Nigeria's president in 2023. He said discussions were on between him, Bukala Saraki, and Governor Bala Mohammed of Bocha State to arrive at the consensus and work as a team. First, it is about this country. It's nothing about individual ambition, either of Bukola Saraki, Amin Wazir Tambo, or Bala Mohammed. We have agreed on that, that there's a need for us to really come together and lower the tension and, and, and make sure that um, we work as a team. Our next new resident electoral commissioner for Ogun State, Nii Jalai, has assumed duty at the commission's office in Abilkuta, the Ogun State capital. The resident electoral commissioner warned against multiple registration and the ongoing voter registration exercise. He said that about 85,600 residents have completed their registration in the ongoing permanent voter card registration, a situation he noted was not good enough. It should be noted that anyone who violates any relevant section of the law during the CVR exercise, particularly by engaging in multiple registration, will be identified and appropriately sanctioned. A coalition under the auspices of the Shakiri National Youth Council has picketed the office of the Independent National Electoral Commission, Abuja, over its alleged refusal to obey court order to recognize 10 and not 12 wards in Wari South local government area of Delta State. The group wants INEC to recognize the 10 wards recognized by the Constitution. They allege that elections in the two additional wards were always characterized by rigging and manipulation in favor of unpopular candidates. The protesters wondered why INEC at both state and national levels has refused to comply with court judgments in spite of several assurances made. We have some more updates for you on the political scene where the governor of Ebonyi State, Governor Dave Umay, has been speaking about the appeal of uh, the judgment which sacked him and his deputy. The governor spoke to State House correspondents after meeting President Muhammad Buhari. He also spoke about the, what the uh, governor of River State in some weeks said about his travels. Well, also at uh, the villa. Uh, the governor of the APC, that is, all uh, the progressive governors of the APC, met with Pro uh, President Muhammad Buhari at the presidential villa. After their meeting, the governor said consensus as an option will be on the table. Take a listen to the chairman of the APC Governors Forum. Mr. President has always urged consensus for all positions because consensus is in accordance with the democratic tenets. And once you have leaders who are established, who are working towards the same goal, yes, we might have our individual differences like was once carefully explained by Governor Erufai, but on the principle of ensuring that we get leadership that will hit the ground running, we are united. And to that extent, we will support any process that will lead to consensus and the emergence of leaders without the need for election. But where people still chose to go against the grain, the, whatever the party constitution allows them, because we, can't, uh, we won't do anything on, undemocratic. Uh, well, it does look uh, in the midst of uh, what a lot of people termed uh, the unpreparedness of the party ahead of the convention. The meetings and the midnight uh, 
uh, gatherings of the APC leaders is uh, towards how they can tidy things up ahead of Saturday's uh, convention. We see how all that plays out and perhaps we'll be able to hear from them how much of planning they put into the convention, whether or not they are ready amidst all of the crises that have trailed uh, the party's leadership over the last few weeks. Well, we told you about the governor of a boy state, Dave Umahi, earlier. Well, let me allow you to listen to what he said after meeting President Muhammad Buhari earlier today at a presidential villa. In the first place, there is no constitutional provision that says that a governor can be sued in the first place. So I'm not suable, you know, but a court judgment is a court judgment. I'm not to interpret it, but the constitution we swore to uphold, I can speak to the constitution, and the constitution says that when once you are elected, you enjoy immunity, and Supreme Court says votes cast in an election belong to the candidates, and that's why you have qualifications of a candidate and no qualifications of a political party. I want to thank uh, the PDP and even the man that boasted that he did that hatchet job. If uh, people, uh, the, the people that crucified Christ knew that it would bring salvation to the whole world, they wouldn't have done, a, done that. So it is likened to the hatchet man that boasted, it's likened to Judas Iscariot. What qualifies you uh, just because you are packing money that is public fund, you know, not you know, intellectual material, but just packing money? from public funds and you are boasting about it. Otherwise, whom were you? I became a billionaire at the age of 25. I've worked all my life and I've asked him to come for public debate. I do not commission 3.4 kilometer road. I commissioned 35 kilometer road. I commissioned twin flyovers running to one kilometer. I commissioned mega projects with little resources. So, if he says he has done well and there is Mr. This or That, let him come for public Well, interesting scenario playing out in Nigeria's politics. You hear leaders debate over, I mean, it's good to hear them debate about policy and governance issue. That is what citizens are actually interested in, isn't it? Well, we see more of that as the election draws close. So one thing that is fundamental today, perhaps, as far as I'm concerned today, this is one of the biggest story as far as politics is concerned today in Nigeria. And let me get you right into it. It's about the contention over the newly signed Electoral Act 2022. This is what happened today. You remember what happened at the federal uh, high court in Umahia, far away in... Um, uh, Umahia is in Abia State, isn't it? Yes. So there was a judgment from the federal high court asking the attorney general to delete the Section 8412. Now, lawmakers in the Senate and the House of Representatives have resolved to appeal judgment which directed the Attorney General of the Federation, AGF, to delete Section 8412 of the newly signed Electoral Act. This followed a deliberation on the court judgment during today's plenary in both chambers of the National Assembly in Abuja. Meanwhile, the Attorney General has spoken, but let me allow you to listen first and foremost, to the debate on the floor of the, uh, of the House and of the Senate. First and foremost, the Senate. Take a listen to what lawmakers said today. The amendment that I want to make is as follows to the prayer. Accordingly, the Senate resolves to appeal the judgment in suit marked FHC UMC CS 26-2022 for the court to set aside the judgment. So, uh, those are some of the arguments and debate of uh, the senators on the floor of the Senate. I don't know if uh, we can get to hear and listen to those of the House of Representatives in the Green Chamber. Well, you cannot touch a piece of legislation unless it is done by those who have the constitutional authority to do so. And it's on this premise, on those grounds, without even going to the merits, which is what we sought to do, was to differentiate between public service and, 
and, uh, and, and political appointee. But it is on all these grounds and a lot more that I think it behoves on this House, on the National Assembly, however we're going to do it, to appeal this judgment and have it set aside. I will appeal from here that the appeal Attorney General to stop and desist for now and not foreclose the constitutional right of appeal and allow the law to be settled. And I believe there are two prayers on the, on the floor. One is to seek ways and means to appeal and set aside the judgment. And the second is to write a complaint, a formal complaint to the NGC. Meanwhile, the Attorney General of the Federation and the Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, said that the deletion of Section 84, Subsection 12 of the Electoral Act 2002 is still a work in progress and is being considered as such. He said, uh, he may, was making the reference to these, or he was saying these, were fielding questions from State House correspondents after the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting. According to the Attorney General, while the possibility of appeal is not in doubt, government creators and the Law Reform Commission responsible for the codification and gazetting of the laws are collaborating with the Office of the Attorney General to ensure that any addition made to the law is in line with the provisions of the law. Well, you've heard from the executive, you've heard from the National Assembly, and you want to ask yourself, from the judgment of the Federal High Court, which in the eye of the law is law. I mean, what the court says deletes the Section 8412. Is it the role of the National Assembly to make law delete or remove or add? Or is it the role of the executive, the Attorney General's office, to delete or to touch or do anything to the law? What does the Constitution say? Those are some of the fundamental issues. Put that aside and on one hand. Now, look at the implication of the Section 8412, which I'm going to be reading to you in a short while. What does the Section 8412 and what is the implication? I summarize the implication that there are few people in the cabinet, as it presently is, in the President Buhari's cabinet, who by this provision will not be able to fulfill the ambition in 2023. They can only do that if they resign their position. Take a, take a look at what the Section 8412 says. It says, no political appointee at any level shall be a voting delegate or be voted for at a convention or congress of any political party for the purpose of the nomination of candidates for any election. He's asking them that they need to resign their position 30 days before such a convention. Well, APC convention is coming this Saturday. So, tonight, I brought some experts for you. A member of the House of Representatives, Honorable Leke Abejide, is a, a lawmaker of the ADC in, from Kogi State, one person that has been vocal about this matter. And also, we have Honorable Wes Idaosa, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. So, we're looking at it from a legal point of view and also from the law-making point of view. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Give us a sense of, uh, first and foremost, let's look at the legal ramification. What the judge said in the Federal High Court that deletes, it's asking the Attorney General to delete, first and foremost, can, under the Constitution, whose role is it to touch, to delete, or to remove from any part of our laws? Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> By the provisions of Section 4 of the Constitution, it is the duty of the National Assembly to make laws for the peace, good governance of Nigeria. But however, in making the laws, Section 4, subsection 8, also subjects the power of the legislature to make those laws to judicial scrutiny. So it means that if the law that is made by the legislature is not one that is regarded as a lawful one, for example, one that is in violent conflict with the provisions of the Constitution. The courts can interpret and strike out that section of the law to the extent of its inconsistency. So really, there's a check and balance 
you don't have a monopoly of the power to make laws because the laws that you make are subject to the eagle eye of the judiciary. So they can come and have a look at it and say, hey, that section seems to be in conflict with the provisions of the supreme law of our land and to that extent cannot stand. So it, so. Is, it, is, it is right for the judiciary or for the court to make pronouncement or to alter or to adjust any part of our law? Absolutely. This will be the first. There have been other laws that have been struck out. Even in Abuja, a lot of FCT, sections of the FCT, and many have been struck out for its inconsistency mm. with the Nigerian constitution. I remember yeah. some lawyers who went to court yeah. over the parking uh, at, uh, at, the, at the court. Here in Abuja. In Abuja, yeah. Yeah, where the FCT uh, yeah. authorities yeah. and the laws guiding parking on the road, and lawyers went to court Correct. and challenged, and that was actually struck, uh, out. struck out. Correct, because the National Assembly is the lawmaking body for the FCT. Great. So it is not, there's nothing sacrosanct about the courts coming in. It's been so in most jurisdictions. It will always be so, so long as the constitutional provisions of the country remain so, and judicial authorities mm. that have been interpreted to confer such powers on the, on the courts have not been overturned. So the, it, it is confirmed, you yeah. can tell us, that, that the judiciary has a power. Oh, definitely. What about the executive? No question at all. What about the executive? Can the executive delete based on the judgment of the court? I mean, the court has ordered the attorney general go and delete. Can the AGF, does the AGF have a power? You ask yourself, yeah. is the chief law officer of the land, yeah, does but, he have such power? But you see, that, that, that order is superfluous. It's unnecessary. It's a matter of semantics. Delete, strike out, nullify, void. Now, once the pronouncement is made, once the, the order is made void in a section of the law, there's no need to ask the attorney general to delete it. From the order of the court, it becomes void. Now, the only solution will be an appeal. It will be an appeal to restore that. So whether the AG deletes it, it doesn't delete it, once that pronouncement is made, and I'm arguing my next case, I will refer to that judgment, which is extant, and, and argue that the courts cannot consider that provision. So that position of the judgment was unnecessary? Oh, very unnecessary. As long as I mean, the, the court has said that provision is inconsistent with the Constitution, it, 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 yes. I mean, it's... It, 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 correct. It, that nullification is correct. It's just probably based on the relief. You know, don't forget the judges don't come into the arena like that. He, she may have been, she may have allowed the reliefs sought by the applicants. I haven't seen it. It's most likely that the applicants may have overzealously sought a prayed, yeah, yeah, prayed, prayed for the, the general to, to delete it. And the judge, in granting those reliefs, uh, made the pronouncement, and that prob probably was sensationalized. Mm. And that's why I was saying whether you use the word delete, remove, nullify, and so on, the most important order to make is a finding that that section is in conflict with the Constitution, mm. rightly or wrongly, and then nullifying that order mm. to All the right. extent of its inconsistency. On, Honorable Abedjir, you and your colleagues were really furious. Uh, in, I mean, your, your colleagues in the Senate, were, I mean, immediately you went to them, they voted it out, I mean, straight away. It was almost unanimous on the floor of the Senate. But when it came, for you and your colleagues in the House of Reps, I've seen the body language and what happened to the plenary, you were very unhappy with the position of the court. What exactly aggrieved you and your colleagues? Uh, thank you so much. Um, if you notice, we didn't debate it on the floor of the House. When the letter came, apparently we just referred to the committee to go and die there because there is no conflict it's not conflicting anywhere in the constitution you think so i'm very sure okay and Such, we, may, we may go into the sections of the law anyway yeah to look at whether or not uh, three, the position of the national assembly to ask any member of the cabinet either in the state or the or the federal to stay away because what you're literally saying yeah is that, that, for example, and I give you an example, we had a pictures of those who may be affected. What you are saying invariably is like the likes of Babatunde Fashola, the likes of Gozul Akpabio, the likes of uh, Rotimi Amechi, the likes of Chris Ngige. Some of them who have been former governors, you are asking them that do not go near any convention of a party or a congress. That's what the law, that's, 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 that's the implication of the law, about... practically speaking, politically speaking. Yeah. Um... You see, the section is talking about majorly those who have interest in contesting election. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Morally, let us even look at, uh, forget about the issue of position. If you want to contest any election, why must you stay in your executive position and then be vying for the same office? You stay till the day of election. Don't you Is stay, it right? Don't you stay as an elected member of the National Assembly? I'm an elected person. Yeah, I'm not an appointed uh, uh, political office holder. I'm elected. What makes you different from the appointed? The constitution officer? didn't tell me to, to resign. Even, let us go into the section of the constitution you are talking about. Mm. So, you know, that day, I think uh, it was uh, um, this uh, uh, barrister, this um, Zekume, or what yeah, is Michael Zekume. Michael Zekume that came here. And I was telling you that we are going to appeal this case. Because he didn't tell us where this section 8412 conflicted with the Constitution. He didn't say it clearly. Because every section, the one the judge quoted, section 66, subsection 1F, section 107, subsection 1F, section 137, subsection 1F, and section 1, um, okay, uh, 182, subsection 1F. That, this is what the judge relied on. And then we broke it down, each section, what he's talking about? He's talking about the public service and the civil servants. He's not talking about political appointee. So if you read that, that section 318 completely, it will tell you who is a public servant. The, po the portion of section 318 was very clear. Yeah. Who about is a public servant? Those who draw money. Someone like you is you, you, you will not, a public you, officer. You, you, <laughs> you, you will not see any political appointee mentioned there. But a political appointee, in the real sense of it, is he or is he not a public officer? But I, I, uh, that's what I'm saying. Let us go to that section. It's not a public officer because, one, uh, if you are employed today, you are in the federal civil service, mm -hmm. 35 years hmm, of service, or 60 years, whichever confessed, it's there to tell you the time you will retire from service. But as a political appointee, you can be hired today and fired tomorrow. Yeah, but the, uh, does it take? And then when you are even, what, even you are not fired. What when you the, are done, what's the fundamental? There is no remuneration. There is no package for no, you. No, like, let, uh, let's look at it in this way: the fundamental objective of anybody in public office is to serve the public, and be given and, and take salary, or take a monument from the public coffers, isn't it? Yes. But so I does have, that? Does that? This, uh, <laughs> the, but I have just told you now. Everything is relying on constitution as a ground norm. I have told you what the constitution says about who is a public service, a public servant, and who is a political appointee. Political appointee is not even mentioned there. And what we are referring to is the issue of this political. Let there be a level playing field. If you want to contest as a governor, why must you stay in your office and use the instrumentality of that office against your opponent? You use the government resources and contest that election. But, I mean, as a lawmaker, I, I want to ask, I'm trying to uh, I mean, identify the difference between you and a political <laughs> appointee. As a, as, a, as a lawmaker, don't you have the instrumentality of, 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 of government at your beck and call? Uh, uh, maybe you can Is it taking away Thank from you, you? Is it taking away from you when you're going for an election? I'm, like, not, I'm not like, taking like, brief for, like, for any maybe, of it, but I'm just asking a straight question. I'm not in control of army. I'm not in control of police. I'm not in control of anything. I'm just but you, have you have for police. You have the instrument. You have police who are guarding you. When maybe one or two. The same thing goes for th those who are political appointees. <laughs> they, Do they anybody ask them to be taken away from you? Because the fundamental question is whether or not you are taking away the, the, the fundamental rights of these people just because they were appointed by someone into office. Is that fair enough? No, nobody is not parting with their fundamental human rights because nobody says this will not contest election. You can contest election, but you have to resign your political appointment. Uh, uh, Honorable Wester, what, what, what do you think? You, you, being in, you being in the National yeah. Assembly, mm -hmm. and you know how this play out. I mean, if you look at it, from also from those uh, political appointees who today cannot, may not even be able to defend themselves as far as this kind of law is concerned, uh, because they, they, are, they have their principal uh, and they may not be able to speak out. But from your own point of view, what do you think? Is this law fair enough? Well, the thing is, you know, the, when laws are made, there are many reasons why 
uh, the lawmakers make laws. And we have to look at the golden interpretation. How do we uh, ascribe, how, to what do we ascribe the reasons for which they make laws? This, for me, is politically engineered, period. This, this particular law is politically engineered because whether you like it or not, the judge, in my view, may not have gotten the interpretation correctly because put side by side the request made before her, there's clearly difference uh, between a political appointee and, a, and uh, a public servant. And that's, those differences have been affirmed by superior courts. You know, people have been held not to be uh, public servants, even though they are political appointees. But the bad thing about this law, in my view, is that it's discriminatory. It affects the right of Nigerian citizens in a manner that Section 42 of the Constitution does not want. I mean, these are people who hold political opinion. I mean, whether you like it or not, the minister holds a political opinion. By agreeing to serve this government, he must share the same opinion. There must be some affinity for me to agree to work with you politically. The member of the House who is in the same political party with you shares the same opinion to be in the same political party with you. And the Constitution makes it clear that you should not, for any reason, make laws or implement executive orders which it affects a particular public, a public opinion holder, but it's not, does not affect another political opinion holder of the same class. Mm. So whether you are a lawmaker or you are a political appointee, you are all members of the political class, particularly when you share the same affinity of membership. Mm -hmm. Some of you are in the same APC, some of you are in the same PDT, and then you make laws to say, hey, that man should not participate. Some that's of them, because you have the power to make laws. Is, that yeah. is if so, we want so, to contest Some election. of them. That, that, because you have the power to make laws. That's yes. if we want to contest uh, election. Election. Some, some, of, them, some of them have been members of the party. They, some of them are even foundation members. Mm -hmm. and they pay their dues. They make their contributions. Their right of membership also qualifies them to entitle, to, I mean, to entitle them to sponsorship if they can afford you know, to foot the bill or to play the political process. But when you inter intervene by using the law to restrict them and cut that right, that becomes self-serving. All right. Uh, uh, Senator Advocate, let's take a break. Uh, we'll take a break and we look at some other dimension into all of this matter. Uh, the fate of um, this law uh, in the eye of the appeal that uh, the National Assembly wants uh, to go for. And perhaps in the end, who benefits and who is losing out in all of this? Take a, we'll take a break and when we come back, we'll dig deeper into all of this. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us right here. We'll be still looking at the contentions in the new electoral act signed by President Muhammad Buhari. Now, the section 8412 is what a lot of people are talking about because that section, the president had said, National Assembly, please take a look at this section because uh, it is in contradiction with the Constitution. Now, uh, the Senate did not agree with the president. Some uh, people went to the court and the court said it should be deleted. And now, uh, the manner in which they call what the court said is what is in contention right now. It's been, uh, the National Assembly said they are going to appeal the matter. And so tonight, Honorable Wesley that was a senior advocate of Nigeria, who was also a former member of, uh, uh, he was in the National Assembly, and Honorable Leke Abejide, a member of the ADC in the House of Reps from Kogi State. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming tonight. For let, let, me, let me come back to you, um, senior advocate, and ask, um, presently, in the eye of the law, what if the National Assembly, and I'd like to also get clarity from you, uh, the National Assembly was not joined in the matter. Correct. The National Assembly was not even a nominal party in the case. Correct. Do they have the grounds, the locus, to, to, to appeal this matter? Yes, they do, because, well, they are a lawmaking body. The law that is involved was made by them. And the question that... Uh, they will be asked to answer will be uh, what is your interest in seeking to appeal as an interested party? They need uh, to defend that before the matter was... Uh, yeah, that definitely, because they were not in that matter, 
So the only way they can qualify, they have to establish before the court of appeal that they had an in, they have an interest which requires to be protected. And then the question would be, what is the interest? I think the interest is that by the oath of office they have taken, not only do they make laws, they also have a duty to ensure that there is compliance with the Constitution of Nigeria. So wherever, wherever there is an allegation that the Constitution of Nigeria has been derogated from and the court has made a pronouncement, the body that has made that law will definitely have an interest to protect. And the interest to protect would be to ensure that the rule of law is there. And secondly, that the powers to make law which they have is not unduly interfered with. Mm -hmm. And that would be the basis for them to appeal against that decision. And I won't, I won't be too surprised if that the Court of Appeal will grant them the right to appeal as interested parties. I mean, uh, we were talking when we went on break of the camera. And the argument was whether or not this law was discriminatory and whether or not the National Assembly should think with it and try to adjust it in such a way that some people outside of the National Assembly don't think that they are being haunted by it. Because let me take a, take a look at this picture that I will show you right on the screen. These are people that might be directly affected by these. Uh, so look at them. Uh, the Minister of Transportation, uh, the Minister of uh, Niger, Niger Delta Affairs, the, Minister, uh, the Attorney General, the Minister of Labor. These are people who may have one ambition or the other. So invariably, Honorable, what you and your colleagues are saying with the intent of this clause is that these people should first and foremost resign their position before they can even think of their ambition. Have you thought about the political implication of that, of, of that law, of that clause? Uh, the political implication is going to be very good for the country. You know why? Mm -hmm. Any candidate that emerge from any primary will not go to any court for any contest because he will believe that nobody uses position unduly to edge him or her out. You know what I'm telling you? Now, you will see some governors that are going next year. They now appointed so many aides just because they have somebody in mind that they want to put down as their candidate. So, and from there, they are, they, all those political appointees, they are automatic delegates, if not for this section that we're talking about. But if this section comes back to us, maybe I know the area you are talking about, you are talking about those who doesn't, I mean those who do not want to contest election and their political appointees. That's the area you are talking about. That they don't have anything to do with the convention. Well, if the section come back to us and if there's need to look at it again, so be it. But for the courts to now become the lawmaker or the executive now become the lawmaker. It's not right. And that is why we cannot put our arms. We have to fight for our cause to make sure our duty is not taken away from us. If not, a time is coming that any, uh, the judiciary will be the one that will be dictating what to do, the law to make and the law not to make to us. But the judiciary has the powers. All right. It's called judiciary review in law. And they anything... will be doing it unnecessarily. Now, if they do it rightly, no problem. That's like this one that, now, they say it's complete. That's the concept of checks and balance. That I have proved to you. That's the concept that, of checks and balance that the senior advocate explained earlier. But I have proved to you that the section does not conflict with any section of That the is your own uh, opinion. Uh, def opinion. No, not my but own opinion. There are sections of the law in the Constitution. Uh, senior advocate, you mentioned section 44, isn't it? 42. 42, isn't it? Yeah. Right of uh, freedom to form discrimination. Yeah. If you look at section 66 also, you can make inference about how this will affect other people, and it's discriminatory. You're not looking at that. These are obvious okay, conflicts. Okay. The, the, the section that the, the learned judge was uh, relying on is talking about the civil servant, is talking about the public officers. Public appointees. Public, uh, public officers. Po political appointees. It didn't mention political appointees. I'm talking of the... The, the judgment. The oh, yeah. judgment talked about, about the constitutional. Of, yeah. It didn't talk about political but, appointees. But do you think the judge was wrong about uh, the issue of public... Are you debating the fact that political appointees are not public officers? No, I'm not debating it. I said the judge now. Yeah, I'm, the, I'm, yeah, I'm making reference to the judgment where the judge made reference to public officers. 
so that political appointees are public officers. And is that what you're saying? And they public officers? <laughs> they are not. That is what Section 318 is telling me. I have the Section 318. Can you read it for Let us? Let me read it out to you. It means the service of the Federation in any capacity in respect of the government of the Federation. Yeah, but go down there. Yeah, go, so, go down. Uh, and includes clerk of the staff of the ah, National Assembly, mm -hmm. member of the staff of the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. uh, Federal High Court, mm -hmm. member of staff of any commission or authority established for the Federation of the Constitution mm -hmm. and act of the National Assembly, etc. Mm -hmm. etc. Et so, but if you say, if you, if you remember that the members of the cabinet are also constituted also by the, by the act of the National Assembly, also by the Constitution stipulates them. Uh, you mean and you provided for here under subsection D of this uh, definition of this public service of the Federation. Can you read this? I'm, I've read it. As a member, member staff, or, no, section C rather, C member or staff of any commission or authority established for the Federation by, by this, this constitution, constitution or by an act of the National Assembly. So what you are saying now, a political appointee is one of Does the a minister of the Federal Republic, is it established, I mean, is it identified or established by the constitution or not? Yes, it's identified. So, but is it not captured under this 318 that you made mention of? But it, you see, it, uh, if you read this section very well, you have already established it. These political appointees, who knows them? Is it not the principal that brings them from somewhere else? But does he take away the fact that they are constitutionally recognized? They are constitutionally recognized, but not as a public servant or as but, a civil but servant. I've just read to you what public service of the Federation has captured in the Constitution, which is a grand norm. No, you are interpreting it wrongly. You are <laughs> interpreting <laughs> it wrongly. You, 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 you... See, let, let, uh, let us see. Tell the truth. Please, no. give, us, give, us, give us your <laughs> interpretation. No, 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 no. I'm not interpreting. I'm just reading out the law to you. Yeah. And you, that you are, is the law I've got into. You are the lawmaker. I'm the journalist here. I'm just putting the question to you. Let us see. Please, uh, help so us where, here. Well, you see, the truth is, <laughs> we cannot run from the fact that the Constitution has also given the judiciary the right to interpret and to deal with the stuff of matters. <laughs> and so, in exercise of that right, they have had cause to interpret uh, uh, these matters. And it is looking like the trend is that uh, once you are subject to the pleasure, once your appointment is subject to the pleasure of your appointor, such as the president appointing ministers mm -hmm. and so on, and can also fire them without. In fact, let me put it the way officers who have no statutory flavor. In other words, officers who can be hired and fired, fired. at the pleasure of the employer will not appear to be public officers. See, no, okay. Public officers, the truth. Op public officers <laughs> always have a statutory flavor. There is a way they are hired and there is a way you can exit. Oh, yeah. So once you don't believe, belong to that category, you may be engaged in public service without being a public officer. In other words, <laughs> you may be public. This is another dimension, yeah. sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So uh, one area that I'd like you to, and whether or not this is valid, this might be valid at the, appeal, at the appellate court, mm. is the locus of the plaintiff. Yeah. Now, the plaintiff... If he's not a, a, a political appointee, can he be recognized under the law as having locus? Oh, yeah, definitely. The plaintiff has gone to the court to say that certain portions of the Nigerian constitution has been breached or is being breached or likely to be breached by the provisions contained in Section 8412. Now, once you move into constitutionalism, it becomes an area that the courts do not play with. They guide it jealously. Local standing becomes one that is almost automatic when it comes to the interpretation as to whether my dear brother here or West Osa has breached the constitution. And the, the interest is simple. The as a Nigeria, <laughs> the, the, the plaintiff he, is he simple. He has no local standing. As a Nigerian citizen, he is obliged to ensure compliance with the provisions of the Nigerian constitution. Yeah. He's not talking about him or me. He is saying, in the eyes of the constitution, each section, 8412, valid? He's asking for interpretation. There is, there is a locus classicus, yes. senior advocate, and you can educate us better. Mm -hmm. In the case of Bear Corazon, on behalf of Guardian newspaper, yes. 
uh, on the issue of uh, uh, the liberalness of local standards, on the issue of public interest. Of course. There are, of I mean, course. the judges cannot pick and choose in the restrictive and the liberalness of yeah. the issue of local standards. Yeah. If he's standing on the on the point of uh, pub, pub, public interest, yeah. does he have a locus in that sense? No, if he's standing on the point of public interest, he has a locus. The reason is this, it is in the interest of every Nigerian citizen that the constitution of Nigeria be obeyed. Mm. Therefore, if I raise the issue that this constitution is being violated, the courts will hear me. It is difficult to shut me out because the liberalism you have talked about starts with the constitution. And the man said that he's a member of a political party. And this is a law that also operates and affects political parties. No, he didn't go to interpret his constitution. No, the, uh, yeah, the man, he, the lawyer, yeah, in the, in, yeah. in the, when yeah. he went to the court in yeah. Luma, yeah, he says yeah. he's a member of a political yeah. party. Yeah. And on that basis, he, he, he was, I, I assume that he was trying to defend that he had a locus. Oh, yeah. In fact, even having the fact that you are bringing the issue of constitutional interpretation to court alone, every one of us, we are bound by our constitution to which we, we have proclaimed the supreme law of our land. How can it be said that a Nigerian citizen will be shut out by the courts of Nigeria when it comes to the question of whether or not a given exercise of legislative power has violated the provisions of the Constitution? I'm not sure any courts will do so. No court is likely to shut you out. <laughs> it's not, you know, I mean, you are not talking about whether or not this gentleman has been properly appointed permanent secretary. You are not talking about whether or not somebody has been lawfully uh, uh, appointed, you know, to a board or commission. You are talking about whether or not the act of parliament has violated the constitution of Nigeria. There's a difference oh, between talks, the, the there's a difference between the Abraham you know, Adesanya, yeah, yes, I mean, Adesanya I, on the local stand, yeah, yeah, the tight interpretation and the new liberalism, yeah. the new approach of the Nigerian yeah. judiciary as their contribution to the expansion of public interest litigation, yes. which, which, which qualifies yeah. so many. Yeah. And we do do so. Yeah. I can't remember the last time that anyone, any court, turned us down in an attempt to interpret well, I mean, the, the court did required. recently in the Federal yeah. High Court, mm -hmm. in the case of uh, Atiku and a, an NGO, mm -hmm. where they're challenging whether or not Atiku is a citizen so of Nigeria, Nigeria, and the court said the NGO has no locus. But the point is mm -hmm. that under in constitutional law, uh, those points are there that uh, the case of Adesanya and the case of Beko on yeah. behalf of Guardian newspaper, yeah. when the court was asking him, yeah. do you have locus because you are not directly affected by the, by the ceiling of Guardian newspaper so at the time? The good yeah. thing is that we are appealing this. <laughs> oh, yeah. And when yeah. we go for that, we will get better and to know what is in the system. Because everything, everybody is just saying his own. But if you look at the Constitution, except that section C, you are trying to bring out and then to interpret in a different form. There is no way this section complete with anywhere in the Constitution. What about section, if, if section they are talking 66. about, okay, look at this law again and see what about those who doesn't have interest in contesting election. <laughs> One can list him. <laughs> but the situation where you are saying is completely with the constitution and you will not prove it. Yeah. Let us go to what the about Naya section 66? If you, if you don't agree with section 183 mm -hmm. or I mean 138 or section 88, Mm. I mean, if you don't agree with those sections, what about section 66? We, we talk about disqualification and does not include any of these persons oh, yes. that, you have, that you have identified. Oh, yeah. Honorable. Section 66. Yeah. It talks about disqualification of people, I mean, from office. Yeah. Are you reading it? Yeah, yeah, I'm reading it. <laughs> uh, so, what is he saying there? No, no, but you have to talk about it. No, 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 let me, let me, let me, let Okay, so we'll help him. Okay, let, let, let me help you. <laughs> Session 66 basically uh, talks about disqualification. And in the, in the first part of it says, no person shall be, dis shall shall be qualified for election to the Senate or House of Reps. I mean, it, it gives a long, a long, a long line. Um, of, yeah. F, if he is a person employed in the public service of mm. the Federation or any state and has not resigned, Mm. Withdrawn or retired from such employment 30 days before the date of election. So, I mean, the, the, the contradiction that a lot of people are pointing out mm. is that this law talks about primary resigning. This, this one talks about election 30 yeah. days before the election. Uh, so, there is a contradiction. Is Thank God, no. my senior colleague is here. What is elections? <laughs> you, you, you have participated in several elections. Elections start with the primaries. Now, is that right? 
No, yes, of course. No, no, no. You just grace the point. You cannot jump primary and go to general yeah. election. Now, so you see, if <laughs> it's now, impossible. Now, you see, if you raise it that way, yeah, you make things more difficult. Because if you say the election starts from the primaries, and then the constitution is talking about election, thirty days, the 30 the days election. of the election, then it means that you have now disqualified somebody against the spirit and letters of the constitution. Yeah. You have indirectly used the laws that you pass to undermine the provisions of oh, the Constitution. And what does that's, the Constitution say about consistency, that's Honorable? What, that's what you have done. That your law, from the, uh, the, the act of so the Parliament, what, what, what is the, shall not... What is the SCN saying here now? <laughs> you are saying primary is not part of the election? No, I said no, it. I said no, it, no, I said it, it, it. For the, con the, the point <laughs> the, the senior advocate is saying yeah. is that if the Constitution has provided it, <laughs> no other law can, can give yeah. any other... Can, disqualification, can, 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 can give no. another disqualification. Uh, okay. That section 84, yeah. by this by this subsection yeah. of section 66, uh, nullifies the section but, but 84. But it's talking 12. about it's talking you lose it. It's talking about the public uh, server. Yeah. It's but you, you were the one servant. who raised it. Are you giving He's talking about on... public servants here. Yes. I read it. So I should read it again. Go ahead and read it. I say, if he's a person employed in the public service of the Federation or any state, and has not resigned, withdrawn, or retired from such employment 30 days before the date of election. So what you're saying invariably that a any minister, commissioner, mm. should resign 30 yeah, days yeah, before, based to. on this... Uh, you know, the, but, the primary but, starts... But the electoral uh, act... Uh, uh, April 3rd, yeah. and it's going to end by June 3rd. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I believe some of them have even resigned from... What, uh, but what does the electoral act thought? say? But <laughs> what does the electoral act now say? Or the former elector, the former it's section, well, because it's, 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 it's not standing now until your appeal succeeds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you have not work. entered your appeal right now. No. Okay, we are yeah. doing it. Uh, no, 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 you have not entered. No, okay, we are going to enter it. <laughs> <laughs> so when we enter, see, I want to advise. Oh. I read some a uh, write up from Kaudia Julo, mm. Barrister Kaudia Julo. He says it's a bobby trap for APC. Because not only APC, all political parties will try it. If you, if you rely and say, okay, because the court has given one kangaroo judgment and then no, don't you, say you, that. you want to you want to rely on that. A lawmaker. Okay, it's not a kangaroo judgment. Yeah, the uh -huh. court has given the judgment. I will do that statement. Uh -huh. So, and then you want to go ahead without allowing the process to complete, maybe up to Supreme Court. Yeah. What if at the Supreme Court? The, 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 the throw out that I, uh, I know it's, it's going to be one area that is going to be uh, for a long time. And I want to ask debated. you, Sheung and the SEN. <laughs> why? You're why, why? Why? not in the position to ask us because <laughs> I'm the position to okay, ask Okay, I want you. to ask him. <laughs> okay. Why is it that the judgment was delivered in Omar here? Why we are sitting down here in Abuja? Well, the, well you, the Nigerian constitution is applicable nationwide yeah. and the federal high court is one is all one. over nigeria as only it, divisions it's just divided for convenient reasons so any federal high court in nigeria is indeed the federal high court as a in question nigeria. be answered now no. <laughs> it's not clear <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, let's let's close the program but i was sincerely thank you yes, for the rest of the house because tonight uh, you're sitting on the fence you're not uh, on yeah. the side of your former colleagues yeah. in the national assembly you're sitting as a uh, as a lawyer, as, and an, as an officer of the law, of the law and the yeah. temple of justice. Yes. Thank you so much for yes. coming tonight, yes. well, honourable. Let me you <laughs> an interested party in this <laughs> matter. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming. That's our show for tonight, everyone. <laughs> Many thanks for watching. I'm Shiokimale. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>